Liz, let me bring you back to um, domestic politics, though. Um, Liz Truss apparently going on a charm offensive post-party conference, trying to unify the party. I mean, party conferences are normally when you do the charm offensive and you, you have the unified uh, 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 you know, impact and you, you, you sell yourself to the nation. That didn't go very well last week in Birmingham. Um, we've still got rebellions from Tory MPs, various different factions who want her to go further or, 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 or less so than what she's planning to do. Um, there's still this big issue over a benefits rise for universal credit to be announced. We understand from the Work and Pensions Minister, we're speaking to her later in November, um, but to actually take in effect in next April, of whether or not benefits like universal credit raise are raised in line with inflation around 10% now, or whether they're like raised in line with wages around 5.5%. Do you think realistically the Prime Minister is going to have no choice? She can't get the vote through. She will have to renege on that and allow that inflation increase? Well, you need clarity. You need to communicate. You need to be very, very clear what your vision is. You can't be delaying messaging until November because goodness knows what MPs will get up to uh, between now and then. I'm really pleased to see that the Prime Minister and the cha uh, Chancellor are embarking on this campaign to engage. But no leader can, uh, can actually call for unity. You need to, it doesn't come on its own. You need to present that vision that everybody understands, everybody supports, and then is willing to defend especially when, you know, relevant party in party politics, when you need to find that centre ground that allows all wings to then lean into and indeed support. And the very nature of the leadership contest that we had this summer, which I think you were involved with, where we saw candidates appealing just to a slice of the electorate, making promises to secure votes that were never going to be acted upon. And now we've had this U-turn on the, uh, you know, reducing the 45p tax rate. And as you've, you've been saying, a whole load of issues that have come out not allowing non-grads to join the police, the pensions issue, lining and you know going up with inflation or indeed with earnings, uh, recommencing fracking or cutting the overseas age budget, even preventing King Charles from going to COP27. There needs to be a better process, I believe, in which decisions are first of all red teamed, you know, are questioned before they go on the public. You need that quad, perhaps, you know, the prime minister, the deputy, the chancellor, the chief of staff, to make sure that they're road tested then given to cabinet and then mm -hmm. provided support. Well, again, if you As look... you suggested, we got this the wrong way around. Conference ten, uh, was then the, the big debate about what uh, Liz Truss wanted to do. And by then, it was too late. Yeah, I mean, again, you look back at the 45p tax rate, it's genuinely to, to announce major, major help for businesses on their energy bills, not to get one good headline out of it because they made the mistake of putting that 45p uh, tax rate abolition in. Again, entirely, a totally, you know, unforced error. It seems madness. I also want to ask you about Nicola Sturgeon, um, the First Minister of Scotland. Uh, let's have a little listen to what she had to say to Laura Kunzberg on her Sunday morning show on the BBC yesterday. The question to me is would I prefer a Labour government over a Tory government? I, I detest the Tories and everything they stand for so it's not difficult to answer that question. She detests the Tories and everything that they stand for. Um, what do you think of that language uh, Tobias Elwood? You know I'm really sorry to hear that. We want good people to step forward to want to get into public politics whether it be local or national and when they see comments like this of politicians talking about each other in this way it doesn't enthuse people to want to come forward and do the difficult jobs. It's hard enough, you know, a as it is. And uh, I think we should show some decorum, some diplomacy, absolutely, to be able to disagree. But I think we're losing sight of the art of being able to disagree, but still be able to walk out the room and have a conversation. And that is exactly what politics I is all about. Tobias Elwood, really appreciate you joining us, Conservative MP, Chair of the Defence Select Committee. I've been asking you this morning after Nicola Sturgeon said, I detest the Tories. Should politicians be more careful with their language? Tell us why. We just spoke to Tobias Elwood from the Tories about that. Uh, you can text the word talk and then your message to 8722. You can also tweet me at Talk TV. Uh, certainly uh, these people have. Uh, Raj says, uh, I detest her and her politics of grudge and division. But you've just used the word detest yourself. Um, Stee, Stee says, most folk do, don't they? Um, again, Will says, I can't stand her, detest Sturgeon. I'm not sure this is helping the political debate, people. Um, Deborah says, outrageous comment, her true colours are coming out now. Uh, Helen says, imagine the backlash if Liz Truss said she detested the SNP, which is a very good point. Uh, HB says, uh, no, no relation, uh, says, no, I would rather they showed us what they really think. That way it's much easier to make an informed decision. John says, don't worry, the feelings are mutual. Um, uh, Sean says they should and or, or that you be more careful with their language he says uh, all they are doing is making a
a bad name for themselves. Bruce says, sadly, some of our political leaders think it's OK to speak in these terms, referencing hate and scum as part of political dialogue. There's no place in politics for this language. We've seen two MPs murdered in the past five years, including uh, the late Joe Cox. Um, uh, Ali Mirage is a political commentator joining me. You, you're cons- you stood to be a Conservative MP twice, didn't you? Um, uh, do, what do you think of, of this language? Well, look, I believe in free speech. Nicola Sturgeon can say what she wants. But is it becoming of a leader of a nation that wants to be independent? Absolutely not. And also it feeds in more broadly, Julia, to a a really divisive, vitriolic, uh, hate-fueled debate that takes place in social media and the public discourse more generally. And I think politicians of whatever hue fundamentally most of people who go, want to go into politics want to do the right thing for the I people you may disagree you. with them yeah but then disagree with them on policy yeah. uh, not on, not using terminology like this i think it yeah, doesn't help priorities policy. most people want the right want, want, want a good outcome for most people and they have different philosophies and ideologies about what you know how they think you should go about that and therefore different policies i am very good friends with people from the vast array of political opinion i feel no need at all there are people I have spats with on Twitter who I have over for dinner. I mean, you know, because I, I don't need to agree with people, they agree with me, uh, to, to, you know, to, to, to be friends with them. It's very bizarre, isn't it?